Hey everybody, welcome back to Blockchain Central. Today we're starting a brand new series devoted to the biggest tech companies and how they're currently exploring blockchain solutions. We'll eventually end up talking about Microsoft, IBM, and Google, but today the spotlight belongs to Amazon. Enjoy. Every month we publish three videos, two in-depth explorations into the fascinating world of blockchains and one video where we summarize the most important events of the previous month. If you want to stay up to date with our content, be sure to click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that little bell to get notified when we drop a new video. Also, please be sure to check out our Medium blog at medium.com slash at block essence. See the link in the description box for details. Amazon was established in 1994 by Jeff Bezos, who at the time was working a high profile financial job on Wall Street. Inspired by the stats he found, which claimed that in 1994's internet was growing by 2,300% each month, he decided that he can't pass on such an opportunity. After looking at a few potential products, he settled on books as the best item to be sold in an online shop. This decision was motivated by the fact that, with so many books available, it was impossible for even the biggest physical bookstore to hold them all. That was what he correctly identified as his biggest competitive advantage. It is interesting that even now, 25 years later, the bookstore identity is still strong with Amazon. The company went public in 1997 and then endured a very interesting growth spurt. Between 1995 and 2001, the company lost 2.8 billion US dollars making its first quarterly profit in Q4 of 2001. What's more, in the following years, the company decided to forego almost all profits to push for more expansion. In what was an unprecedented decision for a publicly traded company, Amazon kept recording losses for over 10 years with almost no impact on their share prices. Such high levels of investors' confidence can be attributed to Amazon's operating revenue. In 2012, for example, the company lost 274 million on net sales of 13.8 billion. But there was one more reason why the stakeholders were not panicking. That's exactly the main focus of this episode. For all those years of losses, Amazon had one constant that made their growth viable. It was the aspect of their business that allegedly has always been profitable. We're of course talking about Amazon's web services or AWS. It was established in 2002 as a supporting service to Amazon's core business. Its vision was to create a standardized, completely automated web service that relied heavily on distributed cloud solutions. With the benefit of hindsight, no one could argue that launching a cloud service was a good idea. But in 2002, it must have felt like pure lunacy. The inspiration for the service actually came from within. In the year 2000, developing new retail products was taking longer than expected and the cost of development were extremely high. What's more, each product team was working on their own platform, which of course created overheads and redundancies. There was a strong internal demand for reliable, scalable, cost-effective infrastructure services. Andy Jassy, the current CEO of AWS, said that even if they had decided not to offer AWS to external clients, they still would have developed the architecture to support their own business goals. AWS was initially not separated from other services provided by Amazon, and its revenue was not delineated to its company's financial statement. So it's hard to tell how much money the service was making in its first decade of operation. When its performance was revealed in 2015, Amazon reported 1.57 billion in sales in just one quarter. This gives you an idea of how profitable the platform can be. It is also said to be one of the most scalable products offered by Amazon. It's enough to look at the list of their clients to really see how big of an impact AWS had on the tech industry. Among their customers, we can find 21st Century Fox, McDonald's, and Comcast. You would think, given the current fierce competition between Amazon Prime and Netflix, that the two companies are not likely to work together. Well, guess what? Netflix is actually one of the highest profile clients of Amazon Web Services. Oh, and we probably should mention NASA and President Obama's 2012 presidential campaign as other notable customers. So what are Amazon Web Services and uh, what do they have to do with blockchain? Arguably, the most popular products are Amazon EC2 and Amazon S3. The first one is a virtual server located in the cloud. It provides secure, resizable cloud computing capacity and is designed to make web-scale cloud computing easier for developers. The second one is their simple storage server, S3, 
product that offers object storage with options for very high scalability, data availability, security, and performance. In fact, there are more than 150 various products currently being offered under the AWS umbrella, and most of them are directed at B2B customers. The company supports that vast portfolio with an international array of server farmers. The monetization model is described as a pay-as-you-go, which means that you only pay for what you actually use. And that's where blockchain comes in. As a part of their AWS offering, Amazon has recently launched their own managed blockchain as a service available to B2B clients. Jeff Broad, chief evangelist for AWS, claims that the tool makes it possible for clients to create their own blockchain network in minutes. At launch, the network only supported Hyperledger technology, but now developers can also have full advantage of Ethereum solidity. The AWS website actually does a great job explaining how the tool is supposed to work. It also eloquently clarifies the differences between a centralized and a decentralized ledger. Within their blockchain offering, AWS presents four separate products, including QLDB, Quantum Ledger Database, a managed blockchain, blockchain templates, and blockchain partners. The templates are probably the most interesting component of their product offering. They allow you to quickly deploy a blockchain network and then offer an IPA platform to facilitate the management of the newly deployed ledger. Among their active blockchain clients, Amazon lists Health Direct Australia, a national, government-owned, not-for-profit organization. Their goal is to help Australians manage their health and well-being. The use case for blockchain in this sector is the fact that healthcare is extremely regulated and there is a strong need for keeping reliable, immutable, and incorruptible records. Another client mentioned on their website is Smaato, a mobile advertising platform and an ad exchange. They aim to deliver full process transparency for all participants of the advertising ecosystem using AWS blockchain tools. As of August 2019, there is no update regarding the deployment of a blockchain solution by Smaato, but it is likely that the team is working on it as we speak. The fundamental question is, of course, whether Amazon is also going to take advantage of the technology. Taking into consideration that all Amazon services are currently powered by AWS, it is very likely that in the near future, we'll see a blockchain solution being developed and implemented into the existing e-commerce or streaming ecosystem. We should not forget that Amazon owns Twitch, the biggest game streaming platform. The platform sees a significant number of daily donations, mostly processed via PayPal. There are a few exploitive measures that can hurt the streamers though. One such practice are chargebacks, where people would make a large donation and then immediately withdraw it or file a claim against it. That means that any processing fees would be charged to the recipient of the donation. This is apparently used by haters and trolls to attack certain gaming influencers. It really seems to us that many of those issues should be mitigated by deploying Twitch's own cryptocurrency. For example, one that uses Amazon's blockchain platform. Whatever the future brings, the inclusion of blockchain services into Amazon's extremely popular, successful, and maybe most importantly, trusted B2B service is a big move for the entire industry and a clear sign that Amazon sees blockchain as the technology of the future. What do you think about Amazon's involvement with DLT? Have you tried any of their templates? Let us know in the comments. Before you go, please note that this content does not represent financial, legal, or tax advice nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. Also, check out our blog, the link in the description below. You can also follow me on Instagram at TheBlueMantic to catch up with my other projects. See you in the next one.